Well, the trend line is negative against the liberals. They are in big trouble. Welcome back to Northern Perspective, everyone. I'm Cypher. And I'm Fox. Following up on our video from last night, Ken McDonald, who you may recall is the Liberal MP who broke away from his party and stood up to vote for the Conservative motion against the carbon tax, was interviewed by CBC this evening. Let's get into it. MP sided with the Conservatives this week on an opposition motion to repeal all carbon taxes. Mr. McDonald, Avalon. Okay, the Liberal getting all the applause from the Conservatives there is Ken McDonald. He's the MP for the Newfoundland and Labrador riding of Avalon and the only Liberal caucus member to vote with the Conservatives on yesterday's motion. The non-binding motion was defeated. Ken McDonald, thanks for joining us. My pleasure. So you voted with the Conservatives yesterday uh, against the, the Liberal government of which you are a part. Why did you do that? I, I did that because I believe we have to change the way we're approaching the climate change incentive or whatever you want to call it. Uh, I think what we're using right now at this time, at this point in time, is putting a bigger burden on people who are now struggling with a, an affordability crisis, if you want to call it that. Right. Uh, this is particularly acute. You, you represent, you know, CBS, Conception Bay no. South, one of the, the biggest cities in, in the province is the core of your riding. We have a lot of smaller no. rural areas as well. Yes. This is really hurting people there who use oil to heat their home, yeah. and the market signal pricing is supposed to send. There isn't an option for them there. How much is this hurting your party politically in Newfoundland and Labrador? I think it's hurting them a fair bit. Uh, everywhere I go, people come up to me and say, you know, we're losing uh, faith in the Liberal Party. Uh, they appreciate the fact that I've stood up now twice uh, to do away with a carbon tax or to ask for it to be delayed. Uh, I said to someone earlier today, I said I stand with Premier Fury in trying to get not this done away with as such, but get it delayed till we get past this affordability issue. People are finding it very difficult. I've had people tell me they can't afford to buy groceries, uh, they can't afford to heat their homes, and that's hard to hear from especially seniors who live alone and uh, tell me that they go around their house in the spring and winter time with a blanket wrapped around them because they can't afford the home heating fuel and they can't afford to buy beef or chicken. I mean, that's mm. heart-wrenching when you hear somebody say that to you. And my purpose and the way I voted was to make sure that their voices are heard. Isn't that interesting that you finally hear a liberal being honest about what their constituents are saying? You hear the rest of them. And all you hear, especially from, I'm not even going to say, say his name, but the new housing minister. He, he's, he's in Nova Scotia. And he says, well... All my constituents are telling me that they want the carbon tax because it's having, you know, an effect on climate change and, and, they, and they want to do something to help the environment. People do not care about the climate when they cannot feed themselves or their children. Sorry. Sorry, not sorry, actually. Yeah. So don't be, don't be telling lies. And Nova Scotians, if you support the Liberal Party and your MP... Mr. Housing Minister, I hope you see what he's saying. Because these issues that Ken McDonald is describing in rural Newfoundland, that's not in a bubble. Any of the rural places in Canada are having the same problem. So rural Nova Scotia is no different. Rural Saskatchewan is no different. Rural Ontario is no different. Rural Nunavut is no different. Rural BC is no different. Everyone's having the same issues. So it's nice to hear someone being honest for a change. And I guarantee you, liberals weren't happy with Ken standing up last night. They're really not going to be happy with him telling the truth on CBC. Have there been any consequences for you for voting this way? Have you gotten any blowback from the party leadership? No, not at this time. Not at this time. You, you mentioned Premier Fury, um, Andrew Fury, the Premier of Newfoundland and Labrador, the only liberal premier out there. Yeah. And he has been dissing himself from the federal liberal government on this particular issue. All of the Atlantic premiers are frustrated, but they have the liberal distancing on this yeah. suggests the seriousness of the political issue that, that you're dealing with. Do you think the party leadership truly grasps the implications of, of this policy on rural Atlantic Canadian seats in particular? 
I think they're starting to understand it. It was a topic that came up at National Caucus as yeah. well, of course. And uh, we had a commitment, I guess, from some of the ministers that they would take a closer look at this to see exactly what they could do. Uh, I'll use the example of uh, Minister Freeland came to me when she was in Newfoundland to meet with Pattern in Argentia. Right. And she told me, she said, I am going to correct this and you were right. Hmm. And I think she meant I was right on the first vote that I did in the first. Right, because this is the second time you voted yeah. against the government yeah. on this. So, so what does a correction look like, right? Uh, because the Atlantic provinces kind of had their own way of getting around the federal backstop until it became untenable and they sort yes. of ended up signing on. Yeah. So, but what does a correction look like that would satisfy you and, and other I, people? I in think the a correction that would make the most sense would be to delay it at this point. Look, everybody in Atlantic Canada believes climate change is real. Including delay which me. part, though, Mr. McDonald? The, the, the clean, clean fuel, fuel standard? standards, right. okay. standards yep. and as well the tax and the home heating oil. Right. I think if that could be delayed and moved down the road, whether it be four months, six months, or a year, that would allow things to settle and see where the affordability issue is at that time. We can't keep adding on to expenses. And, and David, you know that everything in our province comes in by boat and by truck, and they burn fuel, lots of it. and that cost to bring it in is going to be added to every item that gets on a store shelf somewhere. Oh, wait a minute. But we keep being told that the carbon tax is not adding to inflation. We keep being told that by Trudeau and Freeland and Jibo. All of them. Yeah, but they always start that statement with, let me be very clear. Yeah. And I think we all know what that means. But here you go. Liberal MP... Ken McDonald, everyone be completely prepared after this interview for Ken McDonald to be the most mentioned liberal name out of Pierre's mouth because he is going to say, well, according to Ken McDonald, the carbon tax does put inflation on everything. He said it puts inflation on the boat fuel and on the cost of trucking everything in and on the cost of rural Canadians and on home heating. Ken said that. He's a liberal. Be prepared to hear that every single time this subject comes up. And as Pierre should, because it puts more pressure on the rest of the Atlantic premiers that are NDP and liberal and the Trudeau government. And it's nice to hear Ken say, I think the liberals are starting to understand that this is not a popular tax. Show me a popular tax first. But this one especially because they keep trying to gaslight everybody by saying this doesn't have any effect on anything and everyone's getting money back. Well, if everyone's getting money back, then why are all of the Canadians out in the Atlantic provinces screaming to have this removed? Why are all Canadians across the entire country screaming to have this removed? Right. And speaking about Canadians screaming, Fox found that there was a very recent Nanos poll. Now, just to give everybody some context, Nanos is not typically conservative friendly. In fact, on September 1st, they had the Liberals and the Conservatives neck and neck at 32%. Let's see where they are as of yesterday. Well, the trend line is negative against the Liberals. They are in big trouble. Conservatives, check this out, the trend line. Conservatives, 38% support, up six points in the last four weeks. Liberals 27 down 5, NDP 21, Block 6, Green 6. That's a good number for the Greens. People's Party 2%. So the Conservatives now with a significant 11-point lead over the Liberals. In the Nanos tracking, what we saw were ahead of the Conservative Convention. Uh, the Conservatives were ahead. It narrowed a bit. Coming out of the Conservative Convention, what we're seeing is a bump for the Conservatives and all that stuff that's been happening in the House of Commons has not been good for the Liberals. Now they're 11 points uh, back, and the Pierre Poiliev Conservatives are firmly in the driver's seat. And, you know, a lot of these things are self-inflicted, right? Like, it's, it's not a result of the brilliance of the Conservatives. You know, the Conservatives basically are not making mistakes, mm -hmm. and they're very controlled and disciplined. And they're just watching what is turning out to be a car crash for uh, for the Liberals and Justin Trudeau politically. And now, right now, the Conservatives have an 11-point advantage, uh, you know, majority mm -hmm. territory for the for the Conservatives right now. So, I'm glad uh, Mr. Nanos agrees with us in that the Conservatives are being very careful, very calculative, 
and very surgical. They're being very careful to not make mistakes. They're being very surgical and calculative in terms of what types of attacks they're going to be launching on the liberals and when and how. Well, and recently they haven't even had to do anything. They've just been sitting back and watching the liberal caucus rip itself to shreds. Right. There's a famous, famous saying. Don't interrupt your enemy when they're about to make a mistake. And so far, Pierre and the conservatives have had to sit back and not interrupt a lot. <laughs> because they keep the, the liberals keep making mistakes over and over and over again. I know some of, you, uh, some of our viewers think some of this is intentional by, by the liberals. I, I think you give them too much credit. Yeah, I can't see them being this far down in the polls and, and making these egregious mistakes. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, like if there's a long-term plan, it's it's pretty hidden. Now, some people have said, well, you know, Trudeau will declare an emergency, declare a lockdown and prevent an election. Uh, I, I don't see that happening. I don't think Canadians would go for a lockdown again. You know, the first time around, we were all scared. We didn't know what this virus was. It could hurt everybody or nobody. Nobody knew. But this time, people know. And I don't think they'll be fooled. The only way he could do that is if he was up in the poll significantly. Because one would think he would have the support of the majority of Canadian people. But he's so far down in the polls. That would be disastrous for him to do that. That would send his support literally through the floor. And I think Jagmeet would have no choice but to do a non-confidence vote at that point. Let's see if there's anything else that Nick uh, Nanos has to say. Let's go west. Let's go west. Okay. Let's go west, young man. What's happening in uh, in BC? Well, you can see on uh, on the left hand side is our current model projection, and I'd like to focus on uh, on the Vancouver area. On the right is the last election, and you know you can see a significant difference for the for the Liberals. You know, significant setbacks. You know, if a riding is black, it means it's too close to call within a two percent margin. If it's gray, it's too close to call within a zero to seven percent margin between the two front runners. And, you know, check out, you know, basically you have liberal setbacks uh, across Vancouver with them only holding in our current seat projections three ridings. I think it's Vancouver South, Surrey Center and Surrey Newton. I think those are the three that they hold on to. This is incredible. What looked to be a liberal stronghold now is completely up for grabs. And some of it's turned blue. And some of it has turned blue. Like, a, not an insignificant amount has turned blue. And those ones that are too close to call, like, that's that's significant, everybody. And in uh, Ontario, especially around the, the greater Toronto area, how, how are things looking? Man, when you look at the last election, it's pretty red in uh, Toronto. Toronto is usually one of those bedrock liberal... Why don't we call it ground zero for the liberals, right? Mm -hmm. When the liberals are strong in Toronto, that means that they can uh, fight nationally and, and look to try to win an election. When they're weak in Toronto, you can see that, uh, that, that it's just bad news. Um, some, interesting, uh, some interesting races to watch. Uh, Parkdale High Park for the NDP could be a pickup, as is uh, Davenport. Uh, for the for the conservatives, they uh, Cambridge is is a riding that goes on the west. That's on the west end of the uh, GTA. It's a riding that goes back and forth. We have Cambridge projected for the for the conservatives, and uh, a lot of those ridings in the western part of uh, the GTA in the Bramptons, Mississaugas, uh, basically in play and uh, and up for grab. And the conservatives could even pick up Vaughn Woodbridge, which would be uh, which be a big gain for them. But the key takeaway here is that sea of red that we saw and usually see in elections is up for grabs has the gta finally learned its lesson time will tell if the election was her, uh, held today it looks like the answer is probably a big yes and the gta the gta is really what the liberals depend on in order to win the election they have got to be extremely concerned when they look at that poll a more liberal friendly pollster and they see all of that they have to be extremely concerned. They've lost their hold out west in BC. They're rapidly losing their hold on both Hamilton area, 
Niagara area and the GTA. And they're losing it out in Atlantic Canada as well. They are just down everywhere. So the question for these liberals is, how long are you going to let this go on, guys? Well, and that's what we've been saying the last couple months is how long are these backbenchers going to sit there and watch their seats disappear to the conservatives? Like at minimum, at minimum, they need to get rid of Trudeau as the party leader in order to try and right this ship. That's the minimum that the liberals can do. Trudeau doesn't want to let it go. No, because he's too narcissistic. Well, we know that. We know that. But it will be an interesting, an interesting couple of months, folks. But based on everything we're hearing, we are still, still expecting an election coming as late as spring of 2024. So strap in, everybody, because we're just getting started. (laughs) 